Hi everyone. So today I'm going to be making a video uh, explaining how to read Hanya Yanagihara's books. Hanya Yanagihara is an American author uh, who has written three books, but one of them has become extremely popular thanks to social media, and that is A Little Life. You've probably heard of this book. You've probably seen it around, especially if you're like a book lover person. Um, and you might be intimidated. You might not be. You might have already read it, uh, or you're into like the idea of wanting to read them but you're not sure where to start, I'm here to kind of give you my spiel or like my personal opinion of where to start. I've read all three of her books and I've had people come to me and tell me that they're not sure where to start or they're scared uh, that they're not gonna like enjoy her world or they're intimidated by her writing and I understand that. She has written three books to date. She published her first book, uh, The People in the Trees in 2013 and then followed by 2015, A Little Life, which she published then. And then finally she published To Paradise last year in 2022. Uh, so it's a mo most recent book. You've probably also have seen it around. It's recently become a paperback. Uh, it's extremely heavy and hardback, so I'm gonna put it down. I am going to give you a summary of each of them. So if you wanna skip uh, the summary of like what they're about, uh, you can uh, go to the timestamps on the video I put uh, where you can just skip to the actual recommendation. So first, The People in the Trees, which was her debut novel that came out 10 years ago. So this book tells the story of Dr. Norton Perina, a Harvard graduate who gets the opportunity to go to a remote island called Ivu Ivu with an anthropologist named Paul Talent and with a researcher named Esme. Um, and they get to go to this island and he gets to explore it. He's just gonna go there as like a young, uh, graduate, you know, trying to understand what's going on. And there, basically, they find a lost tribe and they figure out that this lost tribe has somehow found a way to live like five times longer than their, than their, their usual lifespan. And to do this, he finds out that the tribe eats the flesh of a mysterious turtle in order to like live for a long time, but it comes with a big consequence. And, uh, then he brings this discovery back to America, claims it as his own, and gains so much popularity. But then as the years go by and uh, more things occur, allegations against him surface and it becomes a big problem and he ends up convicted. Her second book, A Little Life, which is arguably the most popular one out of the three of them, well, it came out in 2015, but I think it gained more popularity in between 2020 and 2023 because of social media, because of a new generation of readers who have been discovering this book. Well, this book tells the story of four college friends, Malcolm, Jude, Willem, and JB, who meet in college and then they become like this very close group of friends in New York City. And it's basically like we get a very deep, we get very deep into their lives. But one of them is pretty mysterious. Jude, out of the four friends, is the most mysterious one. He has the most like mysterious uh, habits and nobody really knows his past. And so this book, what it does is that it kind of goes into a dissection of this character of Jude and his past and uh, terrible traumas from his past and how that has affected his present life. And it is a very very beautiful book. It is a very difficult book. Obviously, I'll talk more about it later, but that's a little life. It's mostly about these four friends and one of them, and the, the focus on one of them. And finally, To Paradise, which came out last year, is her most recent book, and this one is actually pretty tricky. This one is, even though it's one book, it is three books in one. So it's three different stories in, in one book. So the really captivating thing about this extremely heavy book is that uh, all three stories take place 100 years apart. So the first story takes place in 1893, the second story takes place in 1993, and then the third story takes place in 2093. And uh, they're all disconnected. They, they actually don't have like a, a correlation. They don't have like characters that connect. There's All three stories are completely disconnected, but they do have one similar theme or they do have several similar, similar themes, especially like the main characters are all named the same thing, but they're kind of like switched around. It can be pretty confusing and it sounds more complicated than it is. So the first story is called Washington Square and it takes place in 1893 in New York City in an alternate universe. So it is not the 1893 that we know of. It is pretty similar, but it has its differences. America is actually broken down into four different countries in this alternate universe. And in this alternate universe, uh, although some things are still similar of how they were in real life, some things are very crucially different. Like for example, being a homosexual and openly homosexual 
is completely normalized and it is almost like it is now but even better i think basically we follow this guy named david who is the son of a very rich uh family in new york city and his sister and brother are are already like partnered up with kids uh and so he's living with his grandfather in his childhood home in washington square and the plot begins when uh david's grandfather is wants to set him up on a date on an arranged sort of marriage or pairing up with this man named charles a very rich man from another family named charles and this pairing feels a little unnatural but david complies and then everything changes when he meets a piano teacher teaching at the same school that he teaches at named edward but turns out that edward is not as rich as he is and that is an issue for this time the second story or the second book in this one is called lipo now wahili and it takes place in 1993 in a, in the regular time that we've known as 1993 and it follows two different storylines it follows david another david but it's a completely different person living in new york city in 1993 with his husband charles and basically they're throwing a party for his their friend because um, he's dying from cancer and they're throwing a little gathering and he's been ignoring his father's letter. His father is dying in Hawaii and his father has sent him a letter and he's ignoring it. He's, he doesn't want to open it. He doesn't want to read it. He's just focused on the party. And then we switch to the other perspective, which is actually David's father who has written him a letter and we just follow that letter. And that letter is extremely long and it is the rest of the story. And it's basically David's father's story from his childhood until, you know, until now. And then the third story, which was my favorite story out of the three, is called Zone 8. And it takes place in 2093 in New York City, <laughs> figures. And it actually follows the only female narrator and character in all of her, all of Hanya Nagara's books. And her name is Charlie. And Charlie's living in this uh, dystopian world, obviously in 2093. It is a terrible society with rules and there's a lot of technology, of course, and there's a plague going on, sort of like a pandemic element to it. And we follow Charlie as she's kind of dealing with terrible relationships that she has with her husband. So it's pretty, it's pretty awkward. And she's kind of dealing with that as she goes to work and just, she doesn't, she can't do anything. It's, it's a terrible society. And one day she meets this guy named Edward, who she gets a connection with. Um, and yeah, and then we also follow, we also see a secret of her husband's and it's it's very intriguing and then as well we see that charlie is very connected to her grandfather charles <laughs> charles charlie her grandfather uh and then we actually follow her grandfather and his life when he was younger with a husband and a kid in like 2050 2060 and yeah that was my favorite story out of the three i give it five stars zone eight so that's all three stories in this one book Okay, now that I've finally gone through the summary of all the books, now I'm actually gonna go through the actual recommendations of where I think you should begin reading Hanya Inagahara's books. So my personal recommendation, like what I, what I would say to somebody who asked me like, hey, where do I begin? Like, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of intimidated. I'm not sure. Where do I begin? I would probably say begin with A Little Life. And I'll tell you why. The People in the Trees is set up in a style that is not traditional of a novel it is written almost like a memoir and it has footnotes that are edited by the person who's writing the memoir and is you know his friend it is written with footnotes there are like sometimes there are uh, pages of footnotes and there it's it's a pretty academic text it is not a traditional novel ultimately it is a novel and it is a really good novel um but it is not written as a traditional novel. So I don't know how good of a beginning or an introduction to her uh, writing this would be. To Paradise as well, like I explained in the summary, but if you weren't there, it is actually three books or three stories in one book. And I think that could be a little bit overwhelming for somebody beginning someone's like writing style or like someone's like, you know, world of books. Um, they're obviously written extremely well, just like the other two books. All three books are ex written extremely well. But um, I think that if you begin with this, you're gonna be a little bit disoriented because uh, it's three stories. So you're kind of getting three of her books in one and it's, it's pretty overwhelming, especially when you're not really sure what you're going into. In comparison to that, A Little Life is set up like a traditional novel. Even though it is really long throughout the whole book, like everything is set up like a traditional novel. It begins like a novel, it ends like a novel. There is no footnotes, there is no nuances, there are no things that make it feel a little bit disjointed. Another thing why I say to start with a little life is because it is 
the best way to introduce yourself to what Hanie Nakahara writes. I know a lot of people know that she touches upon like very sensitive topics, but that's not to ta be taken lightly. Like she touches upon very sensitive topics, especially in this book and in The People in the Trees. These two books touch upon similar sensitive topics. So why am I recommending A Little Life First? Because it is a really good way to get a feel of what she writes, of if you're comfortable enough to endure what she writes. A lot of people have not been able to finish it or, or just give it, you know, give it away because they just, you know, they're not comfortable with it. And that's, that's completely valid. Um, but it's a good way to introduce yourself because if you end up reading like To Paradise first and you like it, and then you try to read this, you're gonna be like, whoa, like there's a lot of things that I wasn't sure were gonna happen in this. And I think also this has a very gradual way of getting to the explicit stuff. I think this one out of the three of them has the most tenderness to it, even though it is a pretty sad book. Because it is long, the longest, it has space and time to be both sad and happy at the same time or at times. The People in the Trees begins very abruptly with just extreme like, you know, not extreme graphic scenes or anything, but just the content of it. But I think with a little life, you can begin and I can assure you, like you're gonna start reading the book and it's gonna feel like, a, you know, like you're reading a novel, like you're reading an adult literary fiction novel. And it doesn't feel like you're reading anything too crazy until you really get into it. And I think it's the best way to get introduced into her writing. So yeah, I think beginning with a little life would be the best shot, the best idea for you um, as, a, as a reader, as a general reader, if you are, used to you know literary fiction or adult i think you might appreciate reading this one i think that's why a lot of people have started with this one and i think also that's why it's been the most popular one because it is pretty much the most accessible one in terms of like the the range that we're getting right here because it is not like you can just like give it to anybody and call it a day i'm just saying like out of the three of her books this one not only paints her tone and her writing style the best but or the quickest i guess like you can get it very well but also it's the most accurate in terms of like life like it is not speculative it uh it, it's contemporary in a way it doesn't really have a specific time time frame like we don't really know when this book takes place that makes it a little bit more easy to digest because there's not too much to think about it just tells a story the raw story of four friends and especially one of them and, and yeah at, th at times it's difficult but um I think as a whole, it's a very, very thorough and beautiful book. In comparison to, for example, The People in the Trees, this demands a lot of you. Not only is it a very academic kind of text because it has footnotes and it has a lot of talk of like science, but also um, there are things in this book that are not necessarily real. Um, you know, they're made up and it feels almost like wondrous and fantastical. So it demands not only that emotional intelligence and that physicality of like reading and understanding the book, but also a lot of imagination to like imagine all these things. So uh, I think like beginning with this one would be maybe a little bit overwhelming uh, for like a reader who's like not ready for like something that's uh, it's so extreme, it has so many things. And then with To Paradise, like I said, even though all three stories are contemporary, like nothing fantastical about them happens, uh, the first story is pretty speculative. Like it's an, it's an 1893 that um, we don't really know. You know what I mean? It's an 1893 that wasn't real. So you have to get used to this world and try to understand how this new uh, country works. It's like four different countries and it's, you know, there's a lot of things. And then the third book takes place in, in 2093. So now you have to imagine the future and like, it's a lot of imagining. Whereas I think A Little Life lets you rest with that imagining. It's more of like a digestible uh, understanding of what kind of writing she does. Again, I use these words lightly. I'm not saying this is a very digestible read by any means, but I think out of the three, it is the best way and the best one to start with. If you have any questions for me uh, in terms of other books or just these, please let me know. Um, I'm not really usually here on YouTube. I'm usually on Goodreads and Instagram. I review every book I read on both of those. So if you're interested in like my thoughts on any other book or um, just anything, you can go check them out. If you're not into social media, Goodreads is pretty good where I just do the same reviews as Instagram. But Instagram is where I have the most like interaction with people. And yeah, if you're interested in checking out my Instagram, uh, that's where I do my my uh, book reviews. And at the end of the year, I do a final like spiel of like all the books I've read uh, in that year and uh, the favorite ones. It's really fun. It's really fun over there. So check it out if you like. So I really hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you have a good day, night, whatever it is. Bye.